want to talk about empathy and the disruption of the natural empathic learning uh, experiences that are crucial to the development of self-empathy and with that empathy for others. Within the womb, the child is in contact with the mother in a fully empathic way. Um, experiential senses, uh, feelings, insights, dreams flow from mother to child back and forth throughout the time the child is in the womb. We now know that the 12 senses that are described um, by the people who operate the site called birthpsychology.com are operational in the womb and that there is an awful lot of learning that goes on within the womb. The baby is sensitive to the mother and to the environment that the mother is in and is learning all the time. For example, um, children will recognize the voices of their mothers and fathers and their particular accents uh, of their mother tongue or the dialect of whatever area they're living on. They'll recognize these from their experience in the womb. We also know that at birth the baby is fully conscious and is we have uh, plenty of evidences that shows that the babies can describe their birth situation in great detail, often a year or two or three or four later on. Um, what I'm trying to say here is that the baby in utero is a living human being, a person, with their own senses and their own insights and their own empathic understanding of the world and the birth process which is as it happens uh, started by the baby the baby uh, is the initiator of the birth process in most cases um, is a process in which both baby and mother are fully conscious and it is a learning experience it's a brand new experience for the baby and for the first time mother and both are learning uh, through that experience and for the baby, the learning is the beginnings of empathy as a separate being. That is to say, the ability to sense the content of the other as a separate being. And likewise for the mother. Um, so everything that happens at birth, all the senses, all the tastes, all the sounds, all the feelings, all the emotions, um, thoughts and insights that occur um, are writing the neurology of both the mother and the child during this crucial time. If there is a disruption to <clears throat> the key biologically mandated experientials, uh, there can, this can lead to a loss of empathy both in the mother and in the child. And fundamentally for the child, the loss of self-empathy, which flows from the disruption of these empathic sort of experiential learnings, um, is at the root of the urge to power. And the flow is like this. If there is a loss of self-empathy, it makes it much more difficult to empathize with others and that leads directly to a sense of disconnection, a loss of the sense of connection. That in and of itself generates a sense of fear. And with that fear comes the need to control. Control, when it's exercised on any natural organism, will lead to resistance because natural organisms are not by nature designed to be controlled. They are autonomous, sovereign. They operate pretty much off their own bat, their own inner drive to learn, to grow. That's what's running um, the natural organism. And so, quite understandably, they will resist being controlled. And it is that resistance to control that generates the violence of the ones who want to control. This same dynamic applies across the entirety of our current dominant civilization. And if we want to address the problems of that civilization, 
In the long term, we must address the disruption of the child-mother bond. Another way of putting it would be to say that we have to put the child-mother bonding process at the very centre of our society, where the children are at the centre, the children are the core, and their experience is what everything else is built upon. It stands to reason, I mean, this is easy for anyone to understand. The psychology of any emergent society is written in the way the adults behave towards the children. The relationship of the adults to the children is what will generate the psychology of that society. If the children grow up in an environment where they have to deal with control behaviour patterns, be they psychological or physical, um, they have no option but to adapt their neurology to that control. And if this goes on generation after generation without resolution, then what we see is that structures, societal structures, get built that contain those control paradigms within them. In effect, over time, these become codified. And so we see that there is a huge variance between what we call natural law and common law and statute law, where common law is quite simple. Basically, it's cause no harm, cause no loss. Address all complaints. Where statute law permits war, permits imprisonment, permits torture, permits um, usury, uh, and many other abusive practices. So, for all of those people out there who want to see some change because you feel it in your heart and because you are a good person, please understand that at the root of this is the disruption of the child-mother bonding process, which is an empathic learning process, and that we have to address that, as well as all the other actions that people are taking. And rest assured that those actions, if they are taken without addressing that core root issue of the development of that loss of self-empathy and everything that flows from that, they will inevitably create structures of control and the problems will persist.